Hey guys. So, uh, sorry it's been so long since my last video, but I uh, did a few modifications to the machine and uh, did a few test flights. And uh, even today is going to be uh, still a little bit of testing. Make sure I have everything uh, tipped up shape and lined up. Um, what I did, I lowered my seat about four to six inches and uh, that changed my center of gravity so I had to rebuild my cheek plates and also uh, rebuild my cyclic system you know new push rods on my on my controls and uh, that threw every you know everything off so I've been taking a few short curl hops line everything up and, uh, and it just feels different so I'm kinda having to start back from from day one and uh, do crow hops and balance on the mains a little bit and you know see see what uh, everything feels right before I get up in the air we will uh, we've got a damn near perfect day starting to warm up a bit but the the wind sock is flat down so I will have no crosswind or no wind at all we will uh, push it out start it up get everything warmed up and see what it does so here we go Oh no, I left my radio on. We'll see if uh, see if we got enough juice to start it. All right, looks like we'll let let Danny go. Set my altimeter this time. I don't know why my VSI ain't working. It's brand new. I thought the red and the black wire is probably just for the light, but uh, maybe it needs some power, but we'll see. I'll hook that up later today. Alright, so now we got a little bit more of a breeze from the south. Not bad though. Maybe a little, little over five knots. Got 9.1 hours on the hobs. We've got an hour and a half of fuel. We just go about a couple miles south of the airport, play around out above all the fields up out there. So you gotta get a Good view of uh, Danny pre-rotating. There he goes, squeezing in the pre-rotator. Now his pre-rotator, a little different than mine. That's pretty much what all the newer machines use. They've got a uh, Bendix up top, and uh, it comes down to a shaft of a 90-degree gearbox, going over to a uh, slipper belt, like a little flat, one-inch wide belt that runs across the hub right behind the prop. And as he squeezes a handle, it tightens that belt up and turns the shaft, engaging the pre-rotator and uh, starts to turn. So as he, does, as he does it, he's got to give it a little more throttle, a little more squeeze, a little more throttle, a little more squeeze until he gets up to speed. Direct traffic, John 925 South for call. Text into one two for blade spinner. Wait for him to get off the runway and we'll start our pre-rotation. No traffic. And he's up. Rotor brake is off. Engine gauges look good. There's our low. I probably need to reduce the size of that resistor on low. It's barely moving. And we'll kick in high. Well, I'll tell you what. This new starter works real nice. At uh, 150. Okay, so right about here, the audio just goes to shit. And, uh, you know, too much wind noise, too much engine noise. I'm working on that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it down pat someday. So I want to narrate here. This, this hadn't happened to me before, uh, but... I've got about eight gallons of fuel. I usually fly with about five. I mean, it's not, I know three gallons ain't that much weight, but you know, it means a lot on a small aircraft. 
it's very humid, it's hot, you know, my density altitude's up. And uh, so I'm giving it throttle and I'm, you know, getting a little faster, getting a little faster. And I should be getting up off the runway pretty soon here, but uh, I'm thinking, man, so, uh, you know, it wasn't getting as much lift as I expected, but so I finally get up and I hold the nose down, get the uh, airspeed up. And, you know, I'm coming to the end of the runway and I got to make a go or no go decision. And, and I, I thought, well, I'm starting to feel a little lift. Let me and go ahead and go. So I keep the nose down. I am, I could probably pull the nose back a little bit and, and you know, bring it down about maybe, you know, climb out about 50 miles an hour. But I, I think I kept it around 55, maybe even 60. Uh, I'm heading directly, trying to get my nose over into the wind. And I'm looking for power lines. Now I know there's some power lines out along some of these tree lines. I don't see any uh, at the, the first couple of fields here, but I, um, you know, I keep my eyes peeled and um, I'm really, you know, I'm, I can feel a little bit of lift. Uh, the engine's running great. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't feel dangerous. It just feels like I'm not climbing as quick as I, I uh, wanted to. So here I am watching for those power lines and, and I'm you know climbing slowly as you can see. So I decided, well, let me, you know, let me stretch it out. Let me get over some of these nice, you know, I wouldn't say smooth fields, but at least no trees and, uh, and uh, see how it goes. And uh, so I'm slowly climbing some more, still looking for those power lines and uh, I decide that uh, you know I'm I'm just gonna go up here to the uh, before I get to Trinity Bay. There's this this road that heads south, and uh, I'm gonna just kind of follow that road and and head south and just uh, you know feel the feel the machine and see if it's everything's working right and and uh, you know get get a little bit of flight time in. I haven't flown in a while. You know maybe little short hops around a pattern, but but everything seems to feel good except for the lift. But uh, you know the rotor speed's fine, the air speed's fine. You know it's 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 just hot and humid, and I've got you know a few more gallons of fuel than I'm usually used to. So um, I'm I'm feeling confident, and you know there's my power lines I was looking for. So you can see I climbed well above them, and so right along here, you know I just I just get over these fields and I start to turn a little south and and uh, pretty soon up here uh, Danny sneaks up behind me he's uh, probably about you know a hundred foot above me and you know maybe maybe four or five hundred feet to my right and behind me and uh, he, he hits me on the radio and, and uh, you know lets me know he's there and and uh, he actually follows me all the way down to, I, I go all, almost down to Smith Point. And, uh, you know, it starts getting real swampy in that area. So I was like, yeah, let me, let me uh, go ahead and, you know, stay on the not so swampy side. And I went ahead and, uh, when I got further down there, I turned around and started heading back toward the airport. So this flight was a total of about 35 minutes, which was uh, about the longest that I've had this machine in the air at one time so um, it um, it felt good you know engine never skipped a beat the, uh, the you know the the stick shake is very minor I do have a little bit of a hop in the uh, you know in the rotor uh, and I, you know I can I can slowly try to work that out but uh, you know I uh, not without any uh, very expensive equipment and people know how to use it um, you know I won't be able to get it perfect but uh, but I'll do my best so you can see on the right there is uh, Trinity Bay and uh, and uh, if I was to head straight I would uh, end up uh, at the Bolivar Peninsula which is uh, if you make a right and go over the the water you'll hit Galveston Island and uh, so you can see these little fluffy clouds up here. They, uh, they were probably 
at around a thousand feet. I think I'm at like 400 right now. And I could feel the, the wind getting a little, uh, you know, not so smooth uh, under these clouds. So on the way back, I tried to get in between uh, a group of clouds so the uh, air won't be so bad, but it, you know, it, it wasn't so good either. So, but uh, it, it was a good flight altogether, and uh, I had fun, and uh, there will be more. Hopefully I get this audio worked out, and uh, we can we can put together some uh, some better videos for you, and uh, we'll see you. I'm behind you, Larry. Yaro, you got a copy? Okay, I'm here. Okay, I'm just uh, up on the right hand side.